Hello everyone, back to today's first video to JMA Friday for today's first video. So as always on a Friday, we're having a look at the weather for the month ahead with the Japanese and CFS V2 So it's going to take us into the second half of April. So we'll look at the JMA first, then we'll have a look at the CFS, we'll compare the two and see what trends we can find uh, among the model output. So that's what we're doing for today's first video. We'll be back later on with your week's 10-day video update, including all our regular features. And tonight, we've got this month's Enzo update coming up for you, looking at what's happening in terms of El Nino, La Nina, and all that sort of thing in the Pacific Ocean. So that'll be tonight's uh, video up around 7 o'clock, something like that. Right, uh, let's start off then uh, with JMA Friday. So we're going to begin with the 500 millibar height anomaly flow charts from the uh, North Pole uh, down. So this is the North Pole of the uh, Northern Hemisphere just here. The wider sort of Arctic is around there. And then, of course, got the middle latitudes uh, around here. So uh, yellow, orange and red will be extrapolating to above average heights, which is high pressure blue, to below average heights, which is low pressure. These are broken down into weekly pairs. The first weekly pair will take us from uh, today. The 27th of uh, April, right, uh, 27th of March, I should, should say, uh, to the 4th of April. So the uh, coming week has above average heights out to our northwest, below average heights to our south and southeast. Winds will be in from an east to northeast direction. We'll be mainly dry, going to be a lot of dry weather on offer with that. Uh, high pressure will uh, keep things on the dry side, but it'll be quite cold as winds are coming in from the northeast. Yes, we drag in quite cold air around that area of high, high pressure, so relatively cold and dry in the week ahead. Uh, week two takes us from the 4th through to the 11th of April. This time we have the above average heights pulling out into the middle of the Atlantic, below average heights to our east northeast. Winds again are sort of from a northerly direction. It's a weaker area of high pressure sitting to the south of Greenland and the trough of low pressure over Scandinavia. So it could be a little bit more unsettled, this actually, and probably still quite chilly as well. So a relatively cold first half to April being seen here by the uh, JMA. But weeks three and four show a change. This is the 11th to the 25th of April. And then we see low pressure up to our north, below average heights up to the north and northwest, above average heights uh, to west southwest. Winds turn into the west to southwest. And um, it starts to settle down. High pressure is bringing mainly dry conditions, particularly to southern areas. And the main thing, of course, is that it's becoming mild as well. A change in wind direction, quite significant change in wind direction, bringing the air up from a southwesterly direction. So becoming milder through the middle and into second half of April. Uh, this truckle in mid latitude view to confirm all of that. So uh, on this view, the British Isles and Ireland in the top right hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. Reminder of the uh, week one, 500 millibar height and only with the below average heights to the south, the above average heights out to the northwest winds in from the east to northeast. So that should be, uh, that should be uh, a, a relatively dryish but also quite cold type uh, pattern that we're in there. We confirm that with a temperature anomaly. Temperature anomaly is for week one, the 28th of uh, March, 27th of March to the 4th of uh, April. Comes out colder than average, colder than average week ahead. Uh, but also on the dry and average side, especially to the north and west, close to that area of high pressure. Week two, from the 4th to the 11th of April, looks like this still be above average heights out to the northwest. Average heights to our south winds again in from an east to northeasterly direction. The temperature normally remains cold of an average here for the uh, early part of April. Yes, below average temperatures again. And relatively dry, uh, once more dry than average conditions being forecast for this week too. And then we're into week three and four, which is the 11th to the 25th of April, and it's all changed with the above average heights out to the west, southwest, below average heights to the west, northwest, and winds are coming up from a southwesterly direction. Temperature anomalies for week three and four are recovering a little bit. It's nothing to get excited about, but they are moving towards a slightly average to milder than average side. 
And becoming a little bit more unsettled, of course, as we're re-establishing those southwesterly winds, I suppose, we are starting to bring low pressure back in from the Atlantic. So it's not a particularly wet couple of weeks, but definitely um, moving towards something a little bit more unsettled there. So second half of April turns wider and a little bit more unsettled, but before then, it's quite dry and cold. Let's have a look at the surface B2, see how that compares. So again, these are 500 millibar heights, and they break it down into uh, weak periods. The first weak period takes us from the 27th of March to the uh, 2nd of April and we find that in this week we've got the above average heights out to the northwest below average heights to like east northeast and uh, we're doing something a little bit like that with the flow and with the jet stream so very similar to what the uh, to what the GMA is showing, really bringing wind from a north easterly direction. Um, and high pressure out to the northwest keeps us mainly dry but I would have thought it is cold. And then we're into week two, which is the 3rd to the 9th of April. A bit different to what the uh, GMA is showing here. This one's more unsettled with a trough of below average heights developing across much of Western Europe. Above average heights pulling out into the middle of the Atlantic and also away to our northeast. So the jet stream is doing something a bit like that. Looking quite cold and unsettled there to me, that 3rd to the 9th of April. Could be spells of rain, maybe even a little bit of wintry potential if the air is cold enough. Week 3, also different to the JMA, this is the 10th to the 16th of April, this time the Scandinavian high uh, returns, so winds go back in from the east, obviously it turns more settled, it, it dries up again, but uh, it could be quite cold with easterly winds. And then all change again for week four. Very changeable four weeks uh, to come if the JMA is right, with every week rather different to uh, the previous week. So this one is the 17th to 23rd of April. This time, got low pressure out to our west. The last vestiges of that high pressure collapsing into eastern parts of Europe. Winds are going westy. So eventually, in week four, the CFS does finish up, actually, roughly where the JMA is for weeks three and four, in that we start to reintroduce Atlantic winds, winds turn into west-southwest, it would become milder, uh, but probably also becomes um, more unsettled with some rain coming in off the Atlantic. Temperature anomalies for week one, CFS V2 from the 27th of March to the 2nd of April are colder than average, quite substantially so. On the temperature scale, we're around two to two and a half degrees below average. Other parts of Europe are colder than that, going down to three to three and a half degrees below average. So it is a cold week to come, definitely. 27th of March to the 2nd of April. And cold and average again into week two. This is referred to the 9th of April, very significantly below average. Once more, the temperature scale is around a couple of degrees below average. So we've got a cold couple of weeks to come. Uh, but it'll change to week three. Now, this is when the Scandinavian high comes back. So I would have thought this could be a bit cold, but it must be predicted that the wind is kind of southeast rather than easterly. Anyway, it's going for above average temperatures here. This is the temp to the 16th of April. Uh, above average temperatures there, a much milder week. And then from the 17th to 23rd of April, that one is also uh, that one is also uh, milder than average. So temperatures do recover once we get the first couple of weeks out of the way, which are cold. Temperatures then do recover the further on into April we go. Very dry, but precipitation anomaly in the week ahead from the 27th of March to 2nd of April. Really significantly uh, drier than average. Uh, but more unsettled into week two, this is the 8th to the 9th of April, the 3rd to 9th of April. Then we've got this trough of low pressure unengaged through west of Europe. So it's near normal precipitation, wet and average to our south. It might be a little bit more unsettled than that, I think, actually, in reality, based on the 500 millibar height anomaly. Back to relatively dry conditions in week three, this is the 10th to the 16th of April. That one goes back to drier conditions. And then week four, back to more unsettled conditions again. So a very uh, changeable four weeks to come with uh, a, a lot of um, sort of intra-week variation going on there with the CFS. But broad trends, of course, are that weeks one and two are cold and high pressure dominated, certainly for week one. Uh, so, yes, cold couple of weeks to start us off. Then a recovery in temperatures in weeks three and four as we go further on into April. That's what all both models are agreeing about. In terms of the overall pattern, though, and how unsettled it might be, that's where the variation is. That's where we've got a bit of a split between the models. I think out of the two, the CFS is probably the more unsettled of the two 
and the JMA is relatively more anticyclonic. So that remains to be seen how unsettled April is. But overall, cold for the first couple of weeks, and then a recovering temperature with uh, spring-like temperatures as we get through to the uh, middle of the month and beyond. Right then, so uh, that's it uh, for uh, Jamie. I remember, it's just a snapshot of what the model is showing. So it could all look very, very different um, next week. Uh, so if it's just how model looks today or models look today, they could look very different next week. We'll be back later on with your week's 10-day video update. That will have all of the usual features, so come back for that later on. Uh, and of course, we've got the ENSO update coming up for you tonight. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.